morning and welcome to King's. This is our live stream service and um, I'll be hosting the bits at the beginning and the end. I know it sounds like a bit of a routine, so if you're part of King's, it's the same message every week. For those that aren't, it's just so you understand the format. I can see down on the YouTube stream at the side here on my other screen, uh, live chat so people are interacting. And that also means that I can pick up on things that happen live through the service. Uh, and the feedback at the end if required. So there's pre-recorded things that happen during the week and that's what I'll be playing through after this. So I hope you all have had a fantastic week. Um, I've had a thought. So yesterday I was picking some apples from my apple tree and I wanted to make stewed apple. I love it in my muesli. Now one of the things about apples is, is that, um, at least mine, they're cooking apples, Bramley's. So I never know quite when they're ripe so I picked maybe a bucket full of those and I was going to stew them up. And when I was cutting them, it was quite hard. They were really firm. Um, and when I was at a friend's yesterday evening, I said, how do you know when, say, apples in terms of Bramley apples, cooking apples, how do you know when they're ripe? And she said, well, it's not really an appearance thing. It's actually something that happens inside. As they get riper, the fruit becomes softer inside. And it reminds me of something. Let me just read this. So in John, in the Bible, the book of John, just after Jesus has been interacting with the Samarian woman at the well, remember he was really thirsty and he told her about the fact that he was um, the true uh, life and, um, and if she wanted to come and drink, it would be through him. Well, he goes on and he says here to the disciples, then Jesus explained, my nourishment comes from doing the will of God who sent me and um, am from finishing his work. Do you think the work of harvesting will not begin until the summer ends four months from now? Look around you. Vast fields are ripening all around us and are ready for the harvest. And it made me think about the fact that, you know, I went out and started picking these uh, the fruit and it's very easy in the world we live in to judge everything by the external. Now, obviously, if there's no fruit on my tree at all, I can't pick it. But it's more than that. There's a discerning, there is knowing, there's a subtlety to that about knowing that there's a process going on inside this fruit that means that it's going to be as I want it when I pick it. So when the Bible talks about good fruit, it's not just about an appearance. There's something that's going inside. And I think for me, the encouragement is, is that when we look around the world, God is working, the Holy Spirit is working this morning. He is working in you, in me, and there is fruit that we want to produce in our lives. And this isn't just an external thing. It's not something that others can just view. It's something that is deep within inside us as well. So I encourage you this morning to um, engage with, uh, with the content, engage with God this morning as he opens that up. Whatever we do as people, whatever we present to you this morning is only of worth. It's only good fruit when the Holy Spirit is planting that, bedding that in our lives. So a fantastic morning. Do remember the Zoom meetings. I'm sure it'll get mentioned again. Um, I'm going to hand over to, uh, to Nalin now and he's uh, going to share with us a little bit. Oh, there's my picture of my apple tree. Sorry, I should have brought this up. So that's my apple tree, and this is the fruit I should have shown you. Over to Nalin. Well, morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to our online service this morning. It's lovely that you're able to join us and, and be with us together, although it's in a virtual sense, it's still really good just to be together with each other this morning. I'm just gonna start by showing you a few photos from our holiday last week. Carolyn and I and the girls were in Cornwall last week at St. Ives Bay. So let me just briefly, quickly show you a few of our snapshots from, from last week. This one here is, is St. Ives Bay where we were um, mainly based and uh, it was a great beach for surfing, bodyboarding, great beach for fishing and crabbing and building sandcastle. So that was a lovely beach with a, a beautiful blue sea, which we really, really enjoyed. And we're really, really thankful to God that we were able to visit Cornwall last week. And this is another photo and um, this is at Land's End. And um, we were able to go to Land's End in Cornwall and do kind of a, a cliff walk together and just enjoy part of God's beautiful creation. And the reason I share those two um, pictures for, of our Cornwall trip with you is because today's um, passage that we're going to be looking at from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, one of the things, one of the verses says, be 
thankful in all circumstances. That's in chapter 5 of 1 Thessalonians. Be thankful in all circumstances. And yeah, some days can be really tough and some weeks can be really, really tough. <clears throat> the Bible encourages us to be thankful in all circumstances, to try and find things to thank God for, whether it's a trip away, a holiday away, a day away, gardening, family, friends, food, house. There's always something to be thankful for. So let's always try and find something to, to thank God for. And this morning, as we start our service together, we just want to give thanks to God for sending Jesus, his son. What a precious, precious gift of sending his one and only son to die on a cross for us. Tremendous, tremendous love. And we want to thank God for all the thousands of other blessings that he has also given us as well. I'm just going to pray now and then I'm going to hand over to um, the musicians to lead us in a time of praise and thanksgiving and adoration of our God. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for all your blessings, all your many, many blessings upon our lives. Uh, and Father, we just thank you most of all for Jesus, your son. He is so precious. He is our ultimate treasure, our ultimate joy, our ultimate delight. And, and Father, we are weak in ourselves so we pray help us to worship as we should help us to love jesus to love you father as we should we ask these things in jesus name amen hey welcome everybody uh, welcome to our time of worship why don't you stand with me if you're able and let's enter into god's presence and worship him Breaks the power of sin and darkness, whose love is mighty and so much stronger, the King of glory, the King above all kings, who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder, who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain, 
Worthy is the King who conquers the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquers the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquers the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquers the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquers the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquers the grave. This is amazing grace. This is unfailing love that you would take my place, that you would bear my cross, you would lay down your life, your time would be set free. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you. Yeah. 
doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love my fear doesn't stand a chance when i stand in your love my fear doesn't stand a chance when i stand in your Okay, we're on the um, notices part of our service. Uh, and just to say, all our notices are on the weekly news bulletin, which we send out. And you can sign up to that on the King's Church website. Uh, thanks very much to Chris for sending that out each week and, and doing that for us. Thanks very much for that. Um, as you know, we're, our summer series is looking at the letters of Thessalonians 1 and 2. Thessalonians and um, in particular the book is about the second coming of Jesus Christ and us having new resurrected bodies and us being with Jesus forever when he returns and also it's the ushering in of a new heavens and a new earth as well where we will be with Jesus forever so that's the great Christian hope I'd really encourage you, if you weren't able to listen to the talk last week, to go back and listen to the talk last week, which was one of the first main parts of looking at the return of Jesus Christ, a really important doctrine in the Christian church and in the Christian faith. So I'd really encourage you to go back and listen to that if you weren't able to be with us last week. Next week and the week after, we've got two more talks, two more chapters in 2 Thessalonians, which look again around some of the certain aspects of the return of Jesus Christ. So I'd encourage you to listen to those two talks um, next week and the week after as well, where we'll be looking at more um, aspects and characteristics of the return of Jesus. So really, really good series. So I encourage you to listen in. Uh, and also if you were able to go and read those chapters, that'd be even better. Um, Sunday the 6th of September, um, we have our testimony Sunday. Um, we'll be letting you know whether that's in the center or whether that's a, a virtual meeting, but it's an opportunity for everybody to share something of what God has been teaching you over the last couple of months, last two months, three months, something of what God has been stirring in your heart, how you've been growing in your faith, something that you want to thank God for. So it's just an opportunity for all of us to share of the goodness of God and the kindness of God. And you may have gone through a pretty rough patch, but we've still got a testimony and we want to journey with you through that time. So that'll be the 6th of September. You may have noticed that uh, we're not having kids slots and youth slots anymore over the summer period. Um, what that does do is create a little bit more time for a little bit more sharing. And what would be really, really good is if you've been away on holiday or are planning on going away on holiday, if you could send us one or two pictures um, of, of where you've been and uh, we'd love to showcase those um, if you're happy for us to, to do that. So whether it's a day trip somewhere um, and maybe even if you're just gardening in the, in the garden and you're not actually going away anywhere and you want to send us a picture of your garden, um, we'd love to see what you're up to, where you've been. Um, and yeah, just send those in to Joe Jameson and, um, or to myself or to Paul and we'll forward them to Joe Jameson and he can just showcase them at the start of our service. So we're only looking for one or two pictures, one or two pictures of somewhere that you've you've been, not lots of pictures. Um, after our service um, at 12 noon, there is a Zoom catch up. And if you're able to pop in and just say hi to people for five or 10 minutes, um, I'd really encourage you to do that. At 8 p.m. this evening as well, there's a catch up and a, a prayer Zoom as, as well. So get along to that and spend some time praying. Um, if you're interested in small groups, um, the food hub or the prayer chain. All the information for that is on our news bulletin. A big thank you to Sheila for organizing our prayer chain and, and it's working really well. And thank you 
folks for share, sharing your prayer requests through that and your prayer needs and your thanksgiving needs as well thank you so much for that and i just encourage you to keep using the the prayer chain so we can all be praying for you and if you're not signed up to that prayer chain just uh, when you'd like to just let sheila know or myself or paul know as well thank you so much for your tithes and your giving to to king's church to king's vision and to king's mission we're really really thankful for that um, in september we have a vision series and we'll be sharing some of where the finances have been going um, and where we've been spending some of that money and the amazing things that God has been doing through the ministry of, of King's Church. And also we'll be sharing some of the things we'd like to do in the next 12 months in the year ahead as well. So we're really looking forward to the vision series, excited uh, about that. OK, I'm going to hand over to Jonathan now, who's going to um, lead us, um, th walk us through the, the last chapter of the book of 1 Thessalonians. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, um, thank you for your word. Thank you that it's Holy Spirit inspired. And we just pray that you would speak to us and that you would teach us. Father, we pray that you'd bless the children's Zoom session. Father, we pray that you would bless them <coughs> and teach them also. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning and welcome. Today we're going to be taking a look at the final section of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. So if you'd like to follow along in your Bible or favourite Bible app, now's a great time to find 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and we'll be reading from verse 12. In my Bible it has the subtitle Final Instructions. Actually of course that's just a subtitle added by the publishers of the NIV and because this is scripture. These few verses that we're going to be reading through have really important messages for us today at King's Church. Let's look at the first two verses of the passage now, reading from verse 12. Now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to acknowledge those who work hard among you, who care for you in the Lord and who admonish you. Hold them in the highest regard in love because of their work. Live in peace with each other. It's really easy in the busyness of life to take some things for granted and that's true even within the church context. This passage is warning us against that and asking us today at King's Church to acknowledge those who are working hard and those who care for us and those who admonish us. Admonish is it's not a very common word is it today but it means those who warn us or reprimand us when we go astray. So let's spend a short time now acknowledging and honouring our leaders before God. And let's start with Paul and Nalin. Paul has a passion for the Bible. He leads by example, which makes him a great mentor and a role model for others. And he particularly has a way of connecting with young people. He loves talking about the Bible and encouraging others through scripture. Nalin carries the heart of Jesus. He's filled with compassion for people, calling out the goodness in those around him. He's thankful to God and he's the voice of wisdom and rationality right at the heart of the church. And what about those in the wider leadership team? Joe, well, we've seen a lot more of Joe recently, haven't we? But what we see on a Sunday is only a small part of that. A few months ago, he pulled together the streaming technology for us at very short notice. And he's been serving every week ever since by pulling together all the content, coordinating the service and making it all happen. And he's had to jump through a few technical hurdles uh, along the way too. Sheila. Sheila's the real spiritual heart of the church, isn't she? And she has been for many years. She's also opened her home to young people for church meetings, for wor worship nights, and more recently for our small group meetings. Dan and Doug. Well, there's so many technical and practical ways that these men serve in the church that I'd be here all day if I tried to list them out. Dan, of course, has a heart for worshipping God and leading others into God's presence. 
There are many others who serve in the church, such as Simon Chandler, who's managed the church finances for many years. And of course, we acknowledge all those in the ministry teams just before lockdown. Let's also honour Stuart this morning. Stuart led the church with Paul out of some difficult times. And let's go right back to those who founded this church and call out and honour Dave and Pauline Jameson. Dave had an angelic visitation and received a prophetic word which led to the formation of this church 40 years ago. Their passion for God and their obedience to what he had given them paved the way for what we have today. Amazing people. We're so thankful to God. You know, during lockdown, some of us, some of us stood for a minute's applause for NHS workers. So I'm asking you now, to join me wherever you are, to stand if you're able, and honour our leaders, past and present, before God in a minute's applause. Amen. Let's try and remember to regularly honour those who lead us. The next section has a warning and a solution. So let's read from verse 14. And we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive. Encourage the disheartened. Help the weak. Be patient with everyone. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong. But always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Paul is urging us today to warn those who are idle or disruptive. So let's have a look at both of those. Idle. Now, there are many Christians who've heard the gospel, accepted Jesus as their saviour and regularly attend church. But things may slow down a little bit after that. It might be the busyness of life again, or it might be spending a bit too much time on other distractions. It's easy, isn't it, to actually be very busy, but not very active in what God has called us to do. There are also people who are waiting on God for something to happen. And until that day arrives, they choose to, well, tread water, which could perhaps be interpreted as idleness. But let's be honest, I think some of this applies to all of us at some time or other. And what about disruptive? That's taking action that's damaging rather than edifying us or glorifying God. Paul specifically mentions encouraging the disheartened, helping the weak, being patient with everyone, and not paying back wrong with wrong. So we're urged to warn others about being idle and disruptive. I mentioned earlier that there is a warning and there's a solution. So what's the solution? Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. It's one sentence that's actually split into three verses. So that tells us that it's packed with wisdom. I know a pastor who quotes this passage whenever anyone asks him about understanding God's will for their life, like a a one-stop shop. This often leaves people feeling a bit confused, but I, I do think he's on the right track. This sentence sets out the right attitude And by adopting this attitude, we position ourselves to step into the fullness 
of what God has for us. So let me expand on the three verses with the help of a dictionary. Verse 16, rejoice always. Rejoice means to feel or show great joy or delight. We know that joy is one of the fruits of the Spirit. And Psalm 5 verse 11 says, But let all who take refuge in you rejoice. Let them ever sing for joy. So how can we possibly be idle when we're always filled with spiritual joy? I like this book, which is uh, Possessing Joy. It's by Steve Backland, who's linked with Bethel Church in California. As we've already said, joy is a fruit of the Spirit, and it's important to recognise the spiritual power of joy. One simple way of practising this is, whenever you hear a lie, laugh at it, call it out for what it is, and replace it with joy. Simple, isn't it? So let's nurture the spiritual gift of joy in each other. So verse 17 says, pray continually. You know, continually doesn't mean you can't stop. That would be continuously. Continually just means regularly. And I guess without a big gap in between. Many of you have probably got a copy of Too Busy Not To Pray by Bill Hybels on your bookshelf somewhere. Here's mine. Bill is the founder of Willow Creek Community Church in Illinois. Uh, I think they have an average attendance of something like 24,000 people. I found Bill's book to be a very helpful guide for making prayer a priority in my life and for structuring my day to accommodate it. I'm sure many of you have uh, a to-do list or something like that for recording all the things you want to get through. At my place of work, some of the software teams use a methodology called Agile, which works on a similar basis. The product owner lists all of the enhancements and defects for their software product in a list known as the backlog. He or she then prioritises the list in terms of value. The most important and valuable items are brought up higher up in the list and are prioritised. And lower value items drop down the list towards the bottom. In fact, some of those at the bottom of the backlog will never actually be completed because there's always higher value items to work on. It's often the same with our own to-do lists, isn't it? It certainly is for me. Prayer is on there. I just need to be the product owner and recognise the value and then prioritise prayer towards the top of my own product backlog. And if it's up the top or near the top, I know that I'll structure my day accordingly. Another point Bill Hybels makes is prayer is a two-way conversation. It's easy to approach prayer times with a shopping list of things to pray for, particularly when we're so busy. And then we race through them as though God doesn't know what's on the list already anyway. God's eager to speak to us too. So if you can, start your prayer time focusing on God and who he is. Listen to some worship music as you do that and be open to be guided by scripture, so perhaps build a short Bible reading into your prayer time. Then spend some time listening to God, just giving him some space to speak to you. And then, when you feel it's the right time, bring what's on your heart to God in prayer. The other helpful advice Bill Hybels gives is to keep a prayer journal. That sounds very formal, doesn't it? But it could just be a notepad or an app on your phone. Then you just spend a few minutes each day recording what God is saying to you and the things that you've brought before him. What I find so encouraging about this is that I can look back and see what I've prayed about. And then I can see later how he's answered that prayer. I write an ATP with a circle around it standing for answer to prayer in my journal whenever this happens and I found this is a really effective way of building my faith for prayer. I can also see what God's been saying to me over a period of time 
which helps to reinforce that message in me. If you've not read Too Busy Not To Pray, or if you've not read it for a while, then why not aim to read it during August and put it into practice in your life? There have been many challenges operating as a church over the past few months, but one of the improvements is that we have a weekly prayer meeting, which is online, on Zoom, every Sunday at 8pm. You don't need to go out or to travel, you just go online for less than an hour. We've been reading through the Psalms to guide us as we pray, and we can certainly testify to answered prayer. Don't worry if you're uncomfortable about praying out loud. You can still join us and simply add your Amen whenever you want to. It would be wonderful to have more people prioritising the church prayer meeting on a Sunday. Prayer is an expression of our close relationship with God, our conversation with him. He hears our prayers and he responds. I'm sure we can all testify to that. So let's be a church of people who pray and pray continually. So verse 16, rejoice always. Verse 17, pray continually. And verse 18, give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Give thanks in all circumstances. God sent Jesus to pay the price for all the sin in the world. When we were God's enemy, he reached out and saved us. So this is a warning for us. We mustn't let life give us an excuse not to be thankful to God for what he has done for us. Let's resolve to always be thankful, whatever the circumstances that we face today and tomorrow. Have you noticed the pattern here? Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. All these absolutes, that's not easy. And we have to resolve to do this, to choose to remain joyful in a difficult situation. To praise God when our hearts are heavy. To keep on praying when we're not seeing God's answer just yet and to remain thankful. But God himself knows that this can be tough. So let's be honest with God and with those around us whenever we're struggling. Remember what Paul said in the previous passage about encouraging the disheartened. So let's support each other in this. Okay, so on to the next few sentences from verse 19. Do not quench the spirit, do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good and reject every kind of evil. In recent times, the word religion is not liked in some Christian circles, mainly on the basis that it stands for a, a rigid framework that's fixed and not open to the freedom of the spirit. These structures actually came about for the right reasons in order to set a firm foundation in scriptural doctrine. But yes, in some cases, there's not much space for the Holy Spirit to move. You know, throughout Jesus' ministry, he faced opposition in different forms. But from the beginning to the end, he faced spiritual opposition. The enemy directly or indirectly via evil spirits was trying to trick and deceive him constantly. And it's true for us today, we can face spiritual attack. In fact, if we're truly active with whatever God has given us, it's pretty much a certainty. So, as Paul says, we need wisdom. Don't quench the spirit, but test everything. There's some helpful words in 1 John chapter 4 where it says, Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they're from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. This is how you can recognise the Spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God, but every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus 
is not from God. So that's really helpful, isn't it? Does that word of knowledge I received or that prophecy I heard or what I think I've just heard from God, does it bring glory to Jesus and build his kingdom or does it have a negative effect? Remember the, uh, remember the areas we talked about earlier, when the disheartened are encouraged, when those in need are helped, being patient with others, forgiving others and not seeking revenge. These all glorify Jesus and help to build the church. One of the things I love about King's Church is that we believe in bringing together both God's Word and the Holy Spirit. We have biblically sound foundations rooted in Scripture and we're also alive to what God is doing amongst us today. As I said earlier, it was an angelic visitation and a prophetic word that gave birth to this church in the 1970s. So let's make room for the Holy Spirit in our lives and let's encourage each other as we explore and develop our spiritual gifts. But let's hold on to this wisdom from Paul and echoed by John to test what we see, hold on to what's good and reject what isn't. Paul closes out his letter with a prayer for the Church of Thessalonica. So I'm going to close my talk this morning by praying the same prayer over us. May God himself, the God of peace, make us holy through and through. May our whole spirit, soul and bodies be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls us is faithful. Brothers and sisters, let us pray continually for our leaders. Let us greet all God's people with a holy kiss. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us. Amen. Yeah, let's, let's close out um, our service today and... Um, I wouldn't normally close with, with a new song for the church, but God's really put this one on my heart. It's called Yes, I Will by Vertical Worship. I count on one thing same God that never fails, will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all things out. Oh yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley yes i will bless your name oh yes i will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days yes i will
I choose to praise to glorify, glorify the name of all names. Nothing can stand against. I choose to praise to glorify, glorify the name of all names. stand against I choose to praise to glorify glorify the name of all names nothing can stand against oh yes I will lift you high in the lowest valley yes I will bless your for joy when my heart is heavy for all my days oh yes I will for all my days yes I will for all my days yes I will Yes, Lord, I choose to praise you and glorify you. I sing for joy when my heart is heavy. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King above all kings. Yes, Lord, your love is greater, your power is greater. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Speak your love over all of your problems today my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love my pain doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love my past doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Loneliness doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. Fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your Praise you, Lord. We lift you high. We bring before you all of our burdens and lay them at your feet. Mm. We choose to praise you. Instead of carrying them. We trust you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Amen.
Can you hear me now? That's the question. So, apparently, uh, nobody could hear what I was saying. Um, so, uh, I will repeat what I said again. So, thank you, uh, Jonathan, for everything that you've contributed today. Thank you so much for what you've brought. Um, you've acknowledged everybody else. Um, and we acknowledge what you've brought this morning. Uh, and not just what you bring, but you, what you bring as a person. Can you hear? That's the question. I'm just looking. So, um, let me just pray to finish. So, Father, thank you for this morning. We pray you'd continue to work in our church. We pray that you would bless our members in all the things they're doing this week. We ask that the things that we have um, put together this morning, Lord, that you would bless those. That as I started with the, that fruit would, um, would seed and would birth trees. It would birth some substantial in our lives. Um, and we, uh, we thank you that you are with us in everything. You, talk, you tell us to have this joy, but it's you that brings the joy. It's not a circumstantial thing. Thank you, Father. Amen. So, church, speak to you very soon. Take care.